three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. All right, welcome to Roots of Reality. I'm your host, Ben Bauman, and today I'm going to be talking about the history of famines. So for thousands of years, famines have haunted human society around the world, causing countless people to die from starvation. Historically, though, famines have been caused by a number of reasons. For instance, in 1845, the Great Famine in Ireland occurred due to crop failure from a disease affecting potato crops, which killed about one million people. Another cause of famine, though, occurred in 1876 when a global drought caused such dry conditions limiting crop growth around the world that 60 million people died. And these are two of the main ways that famines can occur naturally. However, famines can also be man-made as well, though. For instance, the Soviet famine beginning in, in 1931 was caused by the communist dictator Joseph Stalin, whose policies of collectivization which was essentially the government taking private land from farmers around the Soviet Union, causing major food shortages around the Soviet Union and major food distribution problems, which end up killing at least 5 million people, most of these people being in Ukraine. Thus, whether it's caused by drought, disease, or just people, famines have been a major problem for thousands of years, and fortunately continue to be a problem to this very day. For instance, due to the ongoing civil war in Ethiopia's Tigray region, famine-like conditions are starting to occur where many people are suffering. And additionally, due to the Russian dictator Vladimir Putin's invasion and genocide against Ukraine, as well as Russia now preventing the export of Ukrainian grain around the world, and even in some cases stealing grain from Ukraine, this is causing major problems that could have huge ramifications. For instance, even recently, the United Nations warned that Russia's actions could cause a global famine, specifically hurting countries in the Middle East and Africa. And this is simply because Ukraine is one of the world's largest producers of grain in the world. So if Russia prevents Ukraine from supplying the world with grain, a lot of people are going to starve. Thus, the Russian dictator Vladimir Putin could not only just be killing Ukrainians as well as the thousands of Russians he sends to die in this failing war against Ukraine, but also he could cause thousands of deaths around the world due to starvation. So when we think about the long history of famine in human societies, we have to ask ourselves at some point, how long will we as a species continue to let people die from hunger? How is it possible that as a species, we've been around for hundreds of thousands of years and created these sophisticated societies with all this technology, yet one person could be sitting in a mansion, being a billionaire, and millions of people could be starving around the world at the same time. And even after the situation in Ethiopia or Ukraine are resolved, famines due to climate change lurk in our near future. Because as the world continues to get warmer, the number of droughts globally will increase, the sea levels will rise, causing more flooding, and both of these will damage global food supplies, hurting crops around the world. Thus, with a growing population and with climate change caused famines, our species is going to have to find a way to feed the world. Because if people are starving around the world, what's going to happen is you're going to have lots of people migrating all over the world, desperately trying to save themselves and their families, causing even more issues because of the challenges of taking in new people in, in many countries. Because you would be seeing immigration like never before. There are millions and millions of people are desperately trying to save themselves, and understandably so. So what can we then do to fix this? How do we prevent potential disasters in the future? First off, we should do our best to obviously mitigate the effects of climate change by working towards creating alternative energies 
to fossil fuels, which are polluting our climate, causing climate change in the first place. But we also need to find ways to improve the global food supply. Now, the good news is that scientists are working on ways to do this right now. For example, things like genetically modified foods are already in world markets, which are scientifically more resistant to climate change and disease and require less water than so-called organic food and non-GMO crops. Additionally, new food technology like lab-grown meat is currently being produced as well, which could make it so we no longer have to have these large farmlands for domesticated animals where we have to slaughter them to harvest their meat, and we will no longer have to provide them with water and food to support these large animal farms. Now, for some, all of this may seem unnatural. It may seem strange because, after all, I think people typically can be skeptical of change, can be a little afraid of it. If you've grown up one way your entire life, especially when it comes to things like food and what you're eating, it can be a little scary even to change that up and basically sort of change your way of life to a certain extent. At the end of the day, though, these changes that society undergoes over time is a normal part of the development of our species and how we change. After all, when we think about all the advances our species has made for thousands of years, we have to remember that farm animals did not domesticate themselves, and farms with lots of crops didn't produce themselves. We have to remember that we as a species, we created them because we've been historically manipulating the so-called natural world for thousands of years. By breeding different crops and by domesticating animals. And by doing these things, we've been manipulating plants and animals for food for several thousand years. And just because we can now do it in a laboratory doesn't mean that we're doing something unnatural. Rather, we're just doing what we've always done, advancing technology to help our species survive. Because as human beings, we are simply just using the natural resources that nature has provided us. I mean, if something is made from natural elements on Earth, how exactly is it unnatural? And obviously, as a species, we take medications that are made from lots of different chemical elements, and we consume them on a regular basis, yet no one's afraid to take those. So just because we can create genetically modified foods or lab-grown meat doesn't mean that we have to be afraid of it. Therefore, claims that things like genetically modified organisms, also known as GMOs, are dangerous and just created by these big corporations trying to kill us really is just conspiratorial and pseudoscientific. There is no scientific evidence that GMOs are unsafe, and the scientific consensus of independent scientists who are not connected to these companies that produce GMOs is that GMOs are completely safe. It's understandable for people to be concerned about oh, these giant companies that produce things and not really trusting them because obviously big companies are certainly susceptible to doing things that are wrong. However, that doesn't mean that their products are bad. And that's why we have people that are not affiliated with these companies testing their products to ensure that they are safe and they are as good as they say they are. And that's what's being done with genetically modified foods and what will be done with lab-grown meat. And that is why we know they're completely safe and just as nutritious as so-called organic food. And at the same time, we must remember the irony of these anti-GMO statements is because they often come from the so-called organic food industry, which are also these huge companies that make lots of money convincing you that GMOs are unsafe so that they can sell you their food, which is more expensive because it is simply harder to grow organic food because they need more water and land. So if you're going to be skeptical of big corporations, at least be consistent about it. And if you pay just a little bit more attention also to all the things that get labeled organic today, you can see how much of an advertising gimmick this has become, where literally almost anything in a store can be labeled as organic 
just because they know that people will think, oh, this is natural, this is much healthier for me. And it's just a great way to make money. I'm gonna charge extra money just because I put organic on a bottle of water, for example. And people are like, oh, wow, this is, this is organic water, it's super safe. These giant corporations that are selling this to make money are certainly not lying to me. But a scientist can tell you right away that there's nothing special about this water. There's nothing special about this food that they're labeling as organic. All they're doing is selling you fear to convince you that you need to buy organic products for more money because they want you to be scared. They want you to think, oh, GMOs can cause cancer or they're you know, bad for your health or they're unproven in terms of safety. And all that is just complete pseudoscience and goes against the scientific consensus that has proven that GMOs are safe. So with that, the world continues to be a hectic place where life on our planet continues to have many challenges and many future threats. But we have to remember that we're the most innovative species in the history of our planet. And what we are capable of doing is ultimately up to us. If we want to, we can prevent famines. If we want to, we can combat climate change. If we want to, no one in this world has to ever go hungry. And no species of animal has to be slaughtered for food. And all people and all animals that live on our planet can be protected. So therefore, the biggest question isn't whether we can do it or not. It's whether we want to have the discipline to work together to do it. So, as always, remember, billions of years led to you. So make the most of it.